Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. Today is the 17th of March of 2024 and today the final day of present elections in Russian Federation has started. The Ukrainians, as promised by the Ukrainians, were start bombing and attacking the entire Russia since the beginning of this morning, since the beginning even of this night of the day. According to the Russian sources, during the previous night uh, they managed to bring down up to 35 drones that uh, all over the entire Russia. The drones were brought uh, down in Moscow, in Belgorod region, Kalushka area, Arlovska um, region, Rostovska region, Yaroslavsky region, Kursk and Krasnodarsky Krai. So a lot of drones were brought down and furthermore, according to information we have, uh, the Ukrainians start bombing and attacking Belgorod with multiple launch rocket systems, vampires and Russians have already uh, brought down up to nine missiles of this type of weapon and three missiles of Uragan multiple round uh, launch rocket system but regarding the let's say Russian success uh, further some missiles managed to reach the target uh, this uh, video we got at 8 uh, a.m. of the local time from Belgorod and this is the first explosions in the city starting this morning at least we can see two points three places of with the smoke which confirms three arrivals in the area uh, the Russians of course are very scared to the situation today is the final day and the ukrainians just start just start just it's just 8 9 p am of the local time and obviously uh people are sleeping right now nobody let's say usually usually people um uh, let's say reach the let's say the activity somewhere um the highest level of activity somewhere at, um, at 12 uh, pm 1 pm and uh, during this time i expect the most powerful strikes um, uh, all over the entire russia Furthermore, don't forget that uh, Russia opened their election centers not just on the territory of Russia. We got the election centers as well in Transnistria. Uh, we can expect some um, type of provocation in this area as well. And don't forget that currently there are election process also in Zaporozhye, and Kherson, Crimea, and Donbass, Lugansk directions, which are also these areas also are going to be under heavy Russian Ukrainian fire. Furthermore, we have some geolocations from the airfield Domodedovo in Russia. Uh, it's for now uh, on this video it's very difficult to understand what's happening but uh, if um, you have possibility to listen to the sound you're gonna hear the uh, sound of engine of drone who was flying uh, above the Domodedo airfield in Moscow and then there was explosion this is the result of explosion so obviously the Russians will be forced to close the airfields at least for today and uh, uh, by the morning of uh, the 17th of March, the Russian around 60% of population of Russia has already voted. So we can say that the Russian elections has already, let's say, been completed. So it's according to the main Russian law, it is enough to, let's say, to start counting the uh, voices for Putin or for any other candidate for the position. So, so anyway, the elections has already ended. But of course, during the day, people will continue moving, going to the election centers. And this is a very big risks of course uh, furthermore when talking about the Ukrainians and their further plans today the uh, head of intelligence uh, Budanov reported that in the near, near in the near future the Ukrainians are not planning to stop bombing and attacking the territory of Russian Federation now let's move to the situation on the ground let's discuss the updates we received during the previous night the Russians made few more strikes in Lipci uh, the area that uh, is famous uh, of um, uh, significant number of air defense system that were located here in Yanjin in February and exactly from this sound the Ukrainians brought down the Russian Il-76 with the prisoners of war so the Russians attacked the territory and they managed to discover additional concentration of Ukrainian forces when talking about Grevarun area we start receiving geolocated confirmations of a Ukrainian presence in uh, uh, in the village by the name of uh, Kozinka uh, let's um, discuss them for example on this video we can see the Ukrainians who were trying to hide somewhere in the street, some building, and the Russians were FPV droning them. Uh, on this episode, this episode took place on the Mirror Street, as I understand. 
later we got another video uh, another ukrainian soldiers were uh, located in this area furthermore we have some videos of russian counter attacks on this video we can see the russian tank heading to the uh, edge to the edge uh, let's say positions uh, of the village to the outskirts of the village and from a very short distance the russian tank were attacking and destroying the ukrainian forces the ukrainian positions in the area with, with a very short distance the russians were ruining and destroying the buildings so uh, anyway we can make a conclusion that very likely the Ukrainians do have control over some buildings, some basements uh, on the edge, uh, let's say, positions of uh, Kozinka Street. Of course, it's not something strategically important, not something big or huge. It's just a few buildings. And furthermore, as you can see, the Ukrainians don't have armored vehicles there. So to you know, make this stronghold, uh, let's say, this foothold stronger, of course, they need to start digging in deeper, need to create trenches. And for this, of course, they need time. Uh, from the other side, we will continue receiving updates that Ukrainians are trying to move currently inside of the forest because they understand that forest is the best solution because uh, only from forest the Ukrainians will be able to have more uh, secure positions because from forest, the forest first of all is the best solution to hide from drones and as you can see, if the Ukrainians are able to establish control over forest, they will be forced to stretch the Russian positions and from the forest the Ukrainians will try to develop their attacks further to the Kozinka and the central part. So for now this is just the beginning and the first stage of offensive operation from the Ukrainian side. Very unlikely the Ukrainians are able to develop something more but let's see what is going to be next. And furthermore, according to information we have uh, this morning, uh, the Russian reported about some activity of the Ukrainian so soldiers in the vicinity of Dronovka. D during the previous few days, we were receiving a lot of updates from the line between Popovka, Spodarushina, between Alexandrovka and Kozinka, and now the third town become the area of heavy clashes and active um, clashes between Ukrainians and Russians, and this is Dronovka. Currently, we don't know for sure whether the Ukrainians managed to achieve some results or not, but the sources are saying that the Ukrainians are about to launch their offensive for the purpose to cut these small salient and to establish complete control over the territory so uh, today is going to be another day of very heavy escalations so we'll see what is going to be next now we are moving to the situation on the ground on Avdiyevka uh, directions direction we have a lot of very interesting details and updates from the territory more and more sources confirm additional Russian progress in Orlovka and according to pro-Ukrainian mappers deep state as a result of offensive operation the Ukrainians managed the Russian Russians managed to establish almost complete control over the village and currently the Russians control something like this. The Ukrainians control just the intersection of two roads, the small triangle, triangle Yelanina Street and Novoselov Street and very likely this territory probably is already in the grey zone. Very interesting details are coming from Toninka. The Russians are about to finish the battle for the village. Uh, to understand the current situation is better to increase the numbers of this at least for uh, starting from 16th of March. If you remember just yesterday we discussed another Russian attack on the southern part of the farms. Uh, the Russians were using two personnel carriers. The Ukrainians tried to slow down the Russians with FPV drones, but they haven't managed to do this. The Russians bypassed and managed to dig in deeper to the south of the farms. Basically, they managed to cut the farms from the southern supply road. So the Russians reached the area and the Russian soldiers, uh, let's say, established control over the trenches. So this part was cut off from the Ukrainians and the Ukrainians lost possibility to supply support their forces and farms using the southern road but there was still possibility uh, for ukrainians to use central street and to send some reserves enforcement here using this road and this morning we got another video confirming another russian progress the video was published by the ukrainian 53rd motorized brigade on this video we can see let's say the russian the ukrainian fpv drone operator squad attacking the russians with fpv drones and on the final let's say second of the video the final this this is the final seconds of the video we can see the water reservoirs this is the water reservoirs this is it this is the central street and this is the russian personnel carrier with infantry and ukrainians attack the russians in this area with fpv 
So if we return back to map, the Russians were moving something like this. And in this area, the Russian tank was damaged by FPV drone. This video confirms the Russian progress in this area and that the Russians managed to cut the northern supply road of the farms located on the southeastern part. So very likely today or maybe a few days, uh, in a few days, we're going to receive the final update of comp uh, the final update of complete Russian control, at least over this territory. And after that, the Russians will be able to get and to enter the operational space and to finish the battle for Tonika completely. So a uh, few more details we can receive from Berdychi after a few days of very heavy clashes uh, the situation was stabilized once once again the Ukrainian sources published the video of um, uh, Ukrainian Bradley counter attack the sources are saying that very likely this old video uh, because uh, this area is already in the Russian control but from the other side this video can may mean that uh, the Ukrainians um, uh, maybe have possibility to enter uh, so there is the same situation, let's say, as in Kozinka. The Ukrainians can use armored vehicles, but the Russians don't have this possibility. Uh, furthermore, uh, we have uh, some updates, additional updates uh, from uh, Velika Novoselovka. Uh, the Russians continue bombing and attack the Ukrainian uh, forces, the concentration of forces headquarters. Today we got reports that as a result of attack, the Ukrainians lost uh, up to 10 officers, including and more than 20. 25 soldiers uh, were wounded as a result of airstrike in the area of Velika Novoselovka. Uh, furthermore, the Russians continue advancing in Verbova direction. We have additional control by different mappers. So step by step, uh, uh, piece by piece, the Russians are cutting the cake and moving further and further closer and closer to the northeastern part of Verbova. From the other side, on the northern side, the Russians continue bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions with FAPs, also trying to clear the road for further offensive operation. Interesting video was published today from Robotina. These are archive footage, archive, um, let's say, scenes that took place probably two or three weeks ago. Uh, if you remember, we got a video a few, let's say, weeks ago, how the Russians answered Robotina and established control. And today we got the same video, but longer, up to 12 minutes, if you have access to map you can watch the video the full video on this video we can see the full russian attack using three uh, personnel carriers how the russians entered the central part how the russians established control over three buildings landed the infantry and how they were trying to repel the ukraine counter-attacks uh, and in the end of the video the author of the video claims that uh, the ukrainians lost uh, the five fifty percent let's move back to the final scenes it will show us now what i'm trying to talk no i'm trying to tell you uh, just a second though. This is Robotina and the author claims that the southern part was completely captured by the Russians and now the Ukrainians control just the northern part and the Ukrainian control starts exactly as you can see right now. But uh, so this is approximately uh, the Russian control uh, by uh, the 17th of March. But this once again, this is that those this video was old. This is old video. And uh, after that uh, video, we got a lot of updates from the Ukrainian side and from the Russians how clashes were taking place in the south bar so for now uh, i'm not sure where we need to change the map until we get some more or less reliable resources and more or less reliable information uh, furthermore today we got very interesting details from uh, the ukrainian fpv drone specialists uh, they are saying that uh, when the, the special military operation started the ukrainians uh, pro the, the ukrainians produced much more drones in comparison with the russians but now the ukraine officer says that that in four or five months uh, the Russians will be able to start production uh, such a big number of drones that say uh, there are chances of 99% chances that every single Ukrainian soldier uh, will be killed as a result of FPV drone strikes so the Russians are going to just replace bullets and let's say rifles with FPV drones so, so this is going to be like the future in four or five months the Bulgarian uh, sources published the video of transferring old Soviet armored personnel vehicles and armored vehicles and fighting machines to Ukraine. These are machines of uh, 50s and 60s of uh, the previous century. 
and the Bulgaria has already removed them from the assets and sent them to Ukraine. And the final update is that Macron, uh, let's say, uh, also continued his discussion regarding the sending forces to Ukraine. From one side, he's saying that he's going to send. From the other side, he's saying that on the Olympics game of 2024, he will uh, ask and he will propose Russia to start a ceasefire in Ukraine during this uh, period of time. And uh, the Russian sources are saying that this period of time, the Olympic Games, is going Going to be used by France and NATO countries to redeploy forces on the territory of Ukraine. And that's it for the short video of Military Summary Channel reminds to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon, and have a good day. Bye bye.